complete in order? Item number two is communications. We have some really good presentations tonight that start with item 2A, which is the Jackson County Middle School presentation. Dr. Kirby, whenever you're ready. Good evening, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight with you all. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak on behalf of Jackson County Middle School. Mr. Smith introduced me. I'm Brad Kirby, principal of Jackson County Middle School. I'm in my sixth year in that position. Um, I want to share some of the things that's going on at the middle school, wonderful things, good things going on. This year we've made some changes to our school in hopes of making it a safe environment for learning. First, we're happy to welcome Deputy J.R. Weaver as our school resource officer. Officer Weaver provides a critical layer of security for our school, which in turn keeps our students and staff staff safe. Officer Weaver is a visible presence in our building which builds trust with students. Next we've implemented a sixth grade academy to support the transition from elementary to middle school. These students are grouped into a part of the building that keeps them close to restrooms, cafeteria, a gym, and office area. Further we've developed a targeted intervention program that assigns students to work with teachers in reading and math based on IXL data. Students complete a diagnostic and IXL each month to monitor their growth in math and reading. Based on the most recent data, intervention groups are reassigned on a monthly basis to best meet the needs of students. Finally, one of the most lasting changes is the transition from Jackson County Middle School Colonels to Jackson County Middle School Generals. As a result, our mascot and school colors have changed. Our new general mascot, along with red, white, and blue, will now represent JCMS. This change will align the middle school and high school sports teams. The idea is that it will build camaraderie between the schools, which will make the transition from middle school to high school smoother and a positive experience. To share more with you about the great things going on at JCMS, I've invited two JCMS students. Mr. Avery Stewart and Ms. Chrissy Vaughn to share a short presentation. So come on up. Y'all do a great job. You want to the clicker? Huh? You want to tell him how you want to do it? Don't matter. I'll leave it here to use it if you want to, okay? You know, are they experts? First, we have extracurricular activities such as the academic team, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls golf, boys and girls archery, baseball, softball, football, cheerleading, SDLP, band, cross country, track and field, and volleyball. At the middle school, we have our academic team, which is the coaches, Tammy Markham, and um, what we do there is we go to different schools, or sometimes we stay at our school, and we talk about their stuff. And it's a really fun time. We have a school-wide activities, extracurricular activities, PBIS, spring formal, proficient distinguished and picnic, proficient distinguished awards, and trimester awards day, and tutoring. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade beta club. This is where, like, if you have a certain GPA, you get to go on fun field trips that are educational for students. Um, we have a spring formal every year, and um, Ms. Terry Markham and other staff sets sets it up, and they run the spring formal. It's a great opportunity for students to celebrate the end of the first semester. Of Remix provides a very energized assembly program which teaches students information about anti-bullying and teamwork. He also delivers an anti-drug message. Seventh grade bullying poster contest. That is for first place, Aubrey Madden, second, Lexus Chapel, and then third, Autumn Knight. That is where like they show that bullying is wrong and doesn't it in a way that everyone can see it. Homecoming Queen 
Jalen Wells, homecoming king, Jackson Lakes. This is where people that represent the class will get voted in to the competition to see who is the best one. Um, we have many classroom activities. Um, a lot of the different people come in and help, and um, it's a really fun way to let students engage in different things instead of a paper or book. Colonel Camp leads in the sixth grade academy. So they get them ready to go into sixth grade. It prepares them for all their classes, fake schedules, for them to go around and just explore the JCMS school. Um, a lot of guest speakers come, come to the middle school. For example, um, uh, we've had um, a wildlife speaker, many different things. And it's a really fun way for us to explore different things. PBIS, Positive Behavior Intervention Supports, PBS uses a collaborative database approach to developing effective interventions for wrong behavior. They just help with the problem behavior. Our school resource officer, Deputy Chair Weaver, he has welcome, he's been a welcome addition to the JCMS staff. Deputy Weaver he is a former student and his children have attended our school. He is a huge part of it now and helps the Dexter School Day. So you can see definitely they're the experts. They're better speakers than I am. So uh, great job. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> for a competition for the academic team and actually represented us in the region. He was very modest and didn't men mention that. Yeah. He's one of our academic team gurus and he's only in seventh grade. So, so, he, sure so he omitted that part. Except, yeah. okay. And he also placed third in our conservation essay contest. So that was um, district wide and included the other schools as well. He placed third. That's awesome. I had the third round of <laughs> All right, so this concludes our presentations. You can see we've got lots of things going on at Jackson County Middle School. Good things, great things going on. And we hope to continue that throughout the school year and on into the future. Thank you all for your time and the opportunity to speak. Hey, we'll move on. I want to item 2B, which is Jackson County Public Schools Athletic, Athletic Department Programs. Mr. Wes Bishop, who is our Athletic Director. Good evening. Um, I'm going to be, I, I've not presented in a couple of years, so I am going to present some things that we're doing, some things you need to be made aware of, some good things we're doing. All right, inside the numbers, approximately 1,900 students, grades K through 12. Elementary participation, 475 student athletes. Middle school participation, 152 student athletes. High school participation, 133 student athletes. 760 student athletes. That's 40% of our student population are involved in some sort of extracurricular sporting activity. Now that doesn't have to be high school basketball, but that includes that all the way down to a kindergartner doing cardinal craze over time. So 40% of our kids. I've got a couple pictures here of our teams this year in the elementary tournament. Something that the district done this year and we appreciate it is we got all kids in the same uniform. We got them all a t-shirt this year. Everybody had the same. They got to pick their design, but they had the same thing. So I don't want to keep any kid from participating in any extracurricular sporting activity because of money. So the way that that was having to be done before was you'd have kids paying for uniforms, 
And I, you know, one year I had somebody that bought a hundred dollar uniform. Nobody needs to do that. So we solved the issue, and it went over extremely well. Got a lot of compliments on it. Our participation numbers in elementary increased by 70 students this year. So you can't tell me that didn't have part something to do with that. So this is saying Gap cheer, dance, tipping tigers, saying Gap girls basketball, saying Gap boys basketball, Tyner Elementary cheer, dance, Cardinal craze, Tyner Elementary girls basketball. Down elementary boys basketball, the elementary cheer, dance, and dribblers, and these kids are like I said from kindergarten to fifth grade. Basketball second, third, fourth, and fifth, but the dribblers and so on go kindergarten first. McKee elementary girls basketball and McKee elementary boys basketball. So that's something, you know, that we take a lot of pride in. We have a big crowd. Um, you know, and like I said, our participation was up greatly this year, up over 70 kids. So I think the t-shirts helped, and that's what, that's the goal of it, increase participation. Um, we also started flag football this year. And that is being run through the high school football team. That's the way Coach Sizemore wanted to do it. And I'm, I'm okay with that. And he has over 35 kids participating. This is in third and fourth grade. The reason that we do not do third or fifth grade for elementary or flag league is our fifth graders actually play tackle football in the Southeast Kentucky Middle School Conference. Those teams are made of, due to the fact of smaller schools playing football, they do fifth and sixth grade teams, seventh and eighth grade teams. So our fifth graders actually play tackle with the middle school. Our third and fourth grade, it's going to be February and March. He's doing practices right now. Games will be the last four Thursdays in March. Um, he's got his players up there helping with drills and development. And the last game of the season will be March 30th, 2023 at the high school football field. If anybody would like to see it? Um, no championship, right like that. Just keep playing in regular games. So now we will go on. Now we'll go on to the Jackson County Middle School Generals. So beginning January 1st, 2023, the SBBM at Jackson County Middle School officially changed the mascot from Colonels to Generals, that's the mascot of Jackson County High School. So when this, so the thinking behind this, and I've worked with Dr. Kirby and Mr. Smith on this, we're getting ready to do a major renovation at the middle school. So, you know, and what's the best time to, if you're going to make a change on something like that, when is the time to do that? When you're already going to paint the walls, when you're already going to change the floor tile, when you're already making those changes, you're changing bathroom styles, etc. Okay? So it, it came into effect once we knew that was going to happen, and we ended up going, or Dr. Kirby in the site base voted this in. With that, we got a bunch of maroon and white uniforms. So, and I told our coaches, I said, you guys want the best practice uniforms being by around. So you have to keep your game uniforms, and they were tickled with that. So I talked to a couple friends of mine, who are athletic directors, and we have got all new uniforms for our middle schoolers. And they have either been ordered, or they're confirming sizes to be complete. I've got a mock-up of every uniform that we order, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So here's the first team that got it. This is the first middle school team that got to play in the red, white, and blue. Our middle school volleyball team. I'm looking for my water, sorry. Got dry down. <laughs> and anyway, like I was saying about the uniform, they are a BSN custom. 
It was the same thing Laurel County Schools does, a couple other schools in southeast Kentucky. It's a nice custom uniform made by BSN. The thing I like about it is you can get a replacement in about two to three weeks. That's important when you're dealing with middle school age kids. And they went over really well. All the kids like them. Everybody got a brand new one. That's volleyball. Here's our softball team. Actually got those in last week. That's the mock-up of it. I also bought them new helmets. We bought nine helmets for the baseball and softball teams. JCMS baseball and cheer. Jackson County, that says JCATS, I messed up on that. JCMS basketball. That's our girls' jersey. This is our boys' jersey. JCMS cross country. Generals, generals, red, white, and blue. JCMS football and golf. And our golf bag has got a little blue emblem on it. They actually they can't mock that up like they can the uniforms. Uh, we're all generals, time of renovation. So when we did this, our facility counter is a very nice facility. But it had got a little age on it, so we renovated it to red, white, and blue. And we've done a lot of painting. We completely gutted the bathrooms. New floor and paint, new stalls, everything. We completely redid the concession stand. So with buying all these new uniforms, the middle school's on a uniform rotation, just like the high school is. And I will go over that with you. And again, this is keeping every kid in Jackson County Schools, we want to make it where they don't have to spend a penny. Um, I had someone, a, a coach, tell me earlier after we had bought some stuff, parents said they couldn't afford a warm-up. I looked at the coach and I said, well, that's your problem. I said, because they're going to play. This is not going to keep anybody from playing. And they ended up working it out. But the uniforms are paid for. Sometimes these folks, they'll go a little extravagant and with three or four hoodies and jackets. And <clears throat> All new uniforms are in use 23-24. Replacements only 24-25. Starting in 25-26. Volleyball, archery, cross country. 26-27. Boys baseball, girls softball, 27-28, boys and girls basketball, 28-29, football, golf. Something we do at the high school and middle school is those golfers usually wear polos, can't reuse them. I always want the uniform rotation to be something you can reuse. So we go out and buy them new golf bags every four years. That's their uniform. And they really like that. <clears throat> Replacements will be provided based upon number of kids participating in sport and sizes that may not have been provided for the initial rotation purchase. So if we end up getting kids in, you know, it may be height, weight, whatever, we will make accommodations to get those kids uniforms even after the initial run has been made. Jackson High School, new items, Title IX, new sports, new facilities in the future. Jackson County uh, Central Office batting cage. So what we did is um, our kids, this is for our high school baseball and softball teams. Um, they have, have the need for an indoor facility that they can use when basketball is not in session. So we met that need. Um, it's got a full turf floor, 16 by 80. And it's got a 75 by 15 foot cage that goes on. And they can go in there and hit all they like. Weather does not affect it. 
Track and field. This is something we're working on. You'll see in my next slide. Um, we're actually getting the, the basis for this, which is a high jump mat and the long jump pit built this week. Long jump pit actually got done today. I've sold grass around it, but it, it got done today for long jump and triple jump. This will be our high jump mat that will be stationed. Um, if you're on our football field and, and come in and you look to the flat area to your left, that's where we're going to have it. It's going to have a cover on it. It's going to have a way to be chained down. So it will be in operational use, I'm hoping, in the next two weeks. So. And here is our new jump pit. Now, I know all this right here looks the same. This is, I think, around 18 tons of sand. Is that what it is? 16, 18 tons of sand? 18 inches deep. 18 inches deep. Um, at the end of our pit. Now, some places you go, the pit will be six inches deep. Now, if, if I go and I jump somewhere, and I probably couldn't jump very far, I won't want six inches of sand to stop me. So, imagine a 150 pound kid jumping 12 feet and using six inches of sand. So we got 18 inches, we got a foot and a half of sand. Made it as safe as possible for those kids. And this will be on the far end of the football field. It had to be there due to drainage, electrical issues, etc. And we started our bass fishing team back this year. And this weekend was their first time going fishing. They don't have their uniforms in. We have ordered them or those for them. Um, it ended up, I mean, our, our interest, I hope, stays this way because, like I said, we've had it before. I want to keep it. I don't, I don't want it to get down to one or two kids. And hopefully we can do that. <clears throat> These fish that caught, there's a couple of prizes that got one. And, you know, this is something, you know, that that kids can, they might not be able to do something else, they may get into this and be extremely good at it. And that is the purpose of all this. That's the purpose of having our athletic programs. Purpose of having anything extra creeper. We want these kids to have something that makes them want to be here. <clears throat> this is Jackson County High School uniform schedule. This is made by our Gender Equity Review Committee. We meet three times a year. <clears throat> which consists of coaches, parents, and students, and administrators. 2022-23, this school year, our baseball, softball, and bass fishing got uniforms. Next year, football, home, volleyball, golf, archery. 24-25, boys and girls basketball, cheer. 25-26, football away, track, cross country. Uniform schedule is approved by the Gender Equity Review Committee. Every student that participates in a sport for four years will be provided a new uniform during the time of the team. So that's part of our of having a uniform policy. You want that kid, they start as a freshman. By the time they're a senior, they get one new uniform at least. <clears throat> Title IX, I went over our Gender Equity Review Committee a little bit, and that's the kind of things they do. Um, <clears throat> and some Title IX is, is it's not looking and going, well, uh, boys basketball has this, or basketball has this, and football don't have this. Gender equity, meaning if you have a custom uniform for boys basketball, you gotta have one for girls basketball. But you got a stock uniform for everything else. That's a way out there example, but that's what it means. Genders have to be equitable. Uniform rotation, equitable spending, Hall of Fame credentials. 
Your Gender Equity Review Committee sets your Hall of Fame credentials. Participation list in the school interest survey. <clears throat> so the interest survey is something you probably hear some people discuss it or talking about, you know, as far as getting a new sports team. Oh, we need this, we need that. When I, the purpose of the interest survey is to give us the information that says, okay, you need fast fishing. You need track cross country. You need these things. Um, so, you know, for example, let's say soccer. I got three kids that signed up or they said they wanted soccer last time. You can't reasonably look at that and go, we need to add that. You see what I'm saying? So that, that gives the kids a chance to do their thing. This is giving the eighth through eleventh graders. <clears throat> So some items we're working on for the future. Weight room renovation. Reposter current machines with fabric and padding in the weight room. Powder coat existing equipment. Paint the weight room and get some new doors on there. There's no timetable been set, but that's something we want to do in the future. We've been getting some new bars and equipment, etc. <coughs> And lastly, a future project is our baseball and softball scoreboards. I think there's been some misinformation um, given about these, um, but I'd like to clear air with you. Um, I've never one time looked at a coach, a parent, or a player and said, you're going to fundraise for this. That's never been the plan. I've worked on these for a while. It's always been a sponsorship project. So we're getting sponsorship dollars get to be on the sides and that I mean that, that's what we're doing we've never I've never asked anybody to fundraise anybody that has told you that is telling you something not true so that's something I've been working on with coach lakes the baseball coach and I think you know hopefully in the near future that will happen I think we're getting pretty close we've um, had some folks that have uh, committed to us, so I'm hoping that's something that we get completed in the near future. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Or what about the existing scoreboards from the high school? The existing scoreboards, they look good. They look, I mean, they look good. They're not bad. They're fully functional. They're good scoreboards. But I figured if we could go and not use taxpayer money, which is a big part of this, using donations, we could get our kids something nicer, something that looks better. And our old scoreboards, we could keep, they're the same thing that we had at Tyner. So we could keep those in storage and use those at Tyner in case something happened. And anything could happen with those at any day. I mean, I had to place a new, uh, I can't remember what the board's called, but it's a, some sort of a mechanical board that has to be used for it to work. And be used for parts, etc. Where are we at on the netting for the baseball softball? Thank you. I forgot about that. That has been ordered to BSN. I've been told that's two to three weeks away. So we ordered two sections of 65 by 80, if I can correct on that, which will cover the commons area in between the baseball and softball field. It will help keep the danger down. I went and looked, I showed Mr. Smith several pictures of, of some facilities I went to and looked at those. And, you know, I think we did the right thing. I think, I think it will help immensely with that. But they're very, very nice to meet so They're very nice. We went up and measured it so it would be exactly what it should be. Measured. Measured. Yeah. And money. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have them. Kind of when the season starts or sometime that's, shortly after. Yes, that's that's yeah. the goal. Thank you. That's the goal. We've already got a plan as far as how to anchor them, where to put them in at. And anybody else got anything? Thank you. Awesome. Good presentation. Awesome. Stop.
item under communications is 2C. We have gifted and talented program. That's amend the ball. you all again tonight. Um, I'm putting on a different hat tonight. I'm going to talk to you from my um, gifted education perspective. Every year I've been trying to make an effort to give you an update on how it's going and what we're doing. So that is my purpose tonight. And um, I would like to say that I really love hearing all the things we're doing athletically for our students because it is such a important thing for, uh, it brings every, a, athletics helps to bring in education and tie it all together as a former athlete. I don't think that I would have gotten the education that I got if I hadn't participated in athletics. So um, I'm really excited to hear about all those things. Um, I'm gonna just start out by talking to you about what February is in the gifted education world. And you may or may not have saw the newspaper article, and then we did some um, social media posts about this. But um, the state of Kentucky has declared that February, they went with uh, the CAGE Conference and Organization, which is the Kentucky Association for Gifted Education. And Governor Bashir announced that they were um, proclaiming February as Gifted Education Month in Kentucky. So um, along those same lines, I contacted Mr. Gabbard, Mr. Shane Gabbard, the, judge, the Jackson County Judge Executive, and spoke to him about offering our own proclamation here in Jackson County, and he was happy to oblige. And so we loaded up our middle schoolers and took them down there um, a couple weeks ago and got to watch him sign the proclamation. It was a great experience for them, and um, they hadn't even, some of them had never been in the courthouse before, so they got to go explore a little bit. Uh, we're really excited about this and Mr. Gabbard has said that he will make it an annual thing if we're open to that. I think that will be a, a very exciting experience. I'm going to try to take different groups of kids each year and let them see this proclamation being done. Some other things that we do, I've tried to include as many pictures as possible because I know you all want to see the kids. Um, we do different units. I try to I have them do a lot of enrichment activities, try to explore things outside of what they would be doing in the classroom, maybe in addition to what they're doing in the classroom. So one of the first things we did this year is the postcards to space. You can see that down in the left corner. This was an opportunity that I came across on the internet and each kid decorated a postcard and this was all of my students in grades K through five, um, which represents about, I have about 100 all together at all three elementary schools, and they all made a postcard. Those postcards I mailed in to an organization, and they are sending them up in a rocket and then sending them back to us. They will be stamped with the date that they went into space. So the kids all love doing that, and I thought it was really cool. And for the first Two weeks every single day I had at least four or five kids ask me are our postcards back yet unfortunately they don't understand that it takes a little while to get to space and back so um, we haven't received those back yet but I'm hoping that that happens before the end of the school year if nothing else we also do an electrical circuit unit and you can see them up there in the middle at the top they are building circuits with, with what we call snack circuits they, this is a really hands-on activity where they get to explore circuits and see how they work and build different things. Great STEM activity. We also, along the STEM lines, uh, around Halloween when candy corn was out and about, we did some candy corn mazes. They always, I'm always at, in awe of the creativity that some of them have and the ability to engineer things. So they always surprise me with some of the things they come up with. Here's some other things. Okay, I'm here with our winner of the creativity game. I've got some videos throughout, so I would like to talk to you about them first before they play. So up in the top corner, you all probably saw the snowman that my middle schoolers made. They engineered that by themselves. 
I kind of uh, facilitated an idea with them, and then they got, they did all the hard work. They did all the cups. They they used uh, solo cups, clear solo cups, and staples, and they made the snowman that was out there. Um, we had some lights added in the interior of him, and he lit up, and he was pretty festive around the Christmas season. We also did, in just a minute, I'm going to play you this video, but this was some engineering activities that we did. I have a game that I have cards on and they have regular household objects on them and the students need to combine those and make their own invention. So um, I'll let Zeke tell you about his invention here. We'll play that video. Come here. Okay, I'm here with our winner of the creativity game. What's Zeke. Zeke and he is going he's going to explain the cards that he got and then what he created with them. So go ahead, Pete. So I got a blender, a speaker, and a pencil. So you can listen to music, and then you can get you a little protein shake while you're walking, and then you can write the essays. Write essays. Okay, great job. Everybody give me my hand. That was just one of the creations that they made. They had a great time explaining their creations to everybody else. So we did a little interview process on that. Um, going on, they are block coding. I do with my elementary students. That's getting them ready for more complex coding that they can do later on in the computer science world. We have computer science standards here in Kentucky, and um, I like to dibble into those just a little bit. Um, they use blocks to make commands, to make video games and other things while they're with me in a program called Scratch. Down at the bottom, you see some more circuits being created, and then uh, we had this middle school activity with my middle schoolers. Uh, we combined some literacy and physics to make some, this was around Halloween time as well, um, they made ghosts that they had a ghost race with, and they had to, I gave them some supplies and they had to build everything and figure out how to, um, how to adjust their ghost or how to make changes in order to make it go faster. That went along with the novel that we were reading about, uh, it was a spooky story they picked around Halloween time. One of my goals this year, every year I sit down and I try to think about things that I can do better, uh, things that went well, and this year's goal was more community collaboration. So I got up with the public library in Jackson County and we have collaborated. I had them come in about once every two months so far, and I haven't got up with them this spring to start our spring schedule yet, but um, they would come in and read a book to the kids, and then they would do some sort of STEM activity. So sometimes that included building things with Legos that matched the story, and sometimes um, they did us some drawings and, and other things. So that's a picture of that up at the top. At the bottom, you can see some of my middle school students. I got up with a company called Create and Learn. I, um, some of the conferences that I get to go to, I get new ideas for things to do with these students. This one was one of those. They offer online training for students and they participated in this for a period of three weeks where they got to learn Python coding, which is a more complex code. Um, they did some block coding as well. It was a little bit more advanced than the elementary students do. And then they also did some app creation. So they got to create their own app that can be uploaded or downloaded from um, Apple or an, on an Apple iOS product or on Android. So they were really interested in all of that. Uh, we also explore the arts. This year we've had a, a big focus on music. You can see in just a moment, this is uh, one of the activities that I like to do, they're called Boom Wipers. Each student gets their own pillar and they have to follow a pattern that's up on the smart board or the interactive panel and um, they're, supposed to bank, they're supposed to whack their Boom Wiper at the correct time to make music. And you can <laughs> judge for yourself. If, is this music or not? I don't know, but it sounds pretty cute. These are kindergartners. 
it's got a little green LED indicator on there. The older ones just had like a, um, a battery gauge. These are actually a lot easier to see. Anybody can look at them in the past and make sure they're operational. But I just make sure every month that that little green light's flashing. The battery is actually a four year battery. The old ones were two, so we don't have to replace those as often. Well. And we document all that so we have a record for it. So we're very pleased that we can have a new AED in each building. Now, the, the business side. Again, uh, student enrollment seek update. If you'll shoot that one sheet back up, I'll go through this slowly and, and point at some things. 2022-23 school year student enrollment and seek update, and I started back in 2016-17. Seek is support educational excellence in Kentucky. That's the primary source of funding for Kentucky's public schools, especially rural districts like Jackson County is critical. Our local funding is approximately 10% of our total budget. A lot of people don't realize that, but of our total budget. Only 10% of it comes within the county, approximately, depending on the year. Okay, the <coughs> SEEK is based on the students' adjusted average daily attendance. The big adjustment on AADA was half-day kindergarten. Even though we have full-day kindergarten, we only get paid for half-day. So for easy math, we had 200 kindergartners who had 90% attendance, that would be 180 kids. We would only get an equitable amount of half of that. So I really didn't agree with that, but that changed, and I'll, I'll get into that in a few minutes. Okay, there's been a decrease in enrollment in southeastern Kentucky in recent years. Other districts who are similar to us, all of them, had a decrease in enrollment a couple years before we did. Ours started in 2016-17, but when it hit, it hit really hard, as you can see. And another key thing in yellow, the ADA and that seat lagged one year. The prior year ADA is used for the seat funding. So when you see 1882 right there, that's where the 11296 comes from. It, it lags a year. So what we're doing right now will be what our seat funding is based on for next year. So we'll go down to 1819. We had 1,949 kids. During the year we lost 21 and ended up an ADA of 1781 from 1718 and 11,281,000. As I said, seat is the primary source of funding for almost all Kentucky good school districts definitely the real districts. Okay, the enrollment loss, I would attribute that to job availability. I know Mr. Bishop works with that on a daily basis. What would you attribute this enrollment loss to? I know it's a multi well, combination of things. And the census, we're under 13,000 for the first time in over 30 years. So our population in Jackson County is dropping. Okay. And like I said, it's under, it's under 13,000. Okay. So, in 2019-20, we had 1,918 kids starting the year. We ended with 1,889 for a loss of 29. And our AADA was 1703 for the 18-19 school year, 10,886. 2021, I believe that's when COVID started, the General Assembly provided that we could keep our 18-19 data. Everything was so turned upside down. And Dr. Kirby's heard me talk about this many times in our administrators' meetings, and the board's actually heard me talk about the 1819 data many times and how that works. But the legislature allowed us to keep our 1819 data, which was to our advantage. So you see, in, there's 1819 data, 1703. It's duplicated 1703 there. There's a lot more to seek than AADA, but this is the big chunk of it. So. It stayed about the same. Our seat money stayed about the same. Ten million eight hundred ninety-six, ten million eight hundred ninety-three. So virtually the same. We got to the twenty-one twenty-two school year. We started with one thousand eight hundred eighty-nine kids. We ended up with one thousand eight hundred seventy-six for a loss of thirteen. We actually had growth in the previous year plus three. It looks like we've kind of stabilized around nineteen hundred. Do you agree, Wes? Yes. And again, and we, we're not we've had numbers. We, we've had in the last month 1910 to 1890 and in between so i mean it's it's give or take 10 years a lot yeah so there's the 1703 from 1819 data generated 10 million eight hundred ninety three dollars okay here we keep the 1819 data again this is last year we began with 1889 we ended with 1876 for a loss of 13. and if we kept the 1819 data how did we get an increase in seat of approximately four hundred thousand? That was from full day kindergarten. The legislature passed a bill which funded full day kindergarten. First time I can re ever remember that being done. And like I mentioned earlier, I didn't really agree with it, and probably nobody else does. But all of our kindergartners, we only get half funding for them, even though we have a full day program. 
So, any questions of this point? Okay, we've come to 22, 23, and this, keeping this 18, 19 data was on a year-by-year -year basis. We didn't know it was sometimes January or February that we would have to actually keep it for the upcoming year. The legislature extended it. So beginning this school year, we began with 1,901 kids. Currently, and that's a, as of last Thursday, we have 1,889. Again, there's your 19, 1797, which includes the full-day kindergarten. But as you see, we've got an increase there at 11, of about probably 400,000. We're 11,636, 690, whatever it is, 686. The legislature again came back and acted, and they, uh, we kept our full-day kindergarten. Transportation fund, and again, something that not a lot of people realize, they increased our transportation funding. And let me explain that. Transportation funds, your T-codes, your mileage, it all goes into a big formula that nobody can calculate with them. And if, for easy math, if they said it takes a million dollars for Jackson County Public Schools to transport their students, we would get 52% of that. We do not get fully funded on transportation. So for easy math, if it was a million dollars, we'd get 520,000, that's just for easy math. They actually increased it to 68% for us. So we went from 52% up to 68% on our transportation funding. Still far away from being fully funded, but yet, what is that 16% better? And 23, 24, this is what we project. That one sheet, Cameron, if you want to shoot it up, uh, the one about the SAR, so I can show everybody where I got the numbers. Okay, the SAR, the one number I got, the 1889, this is what I ran last Thursday. If you go to the bottom line of that, that breaks it down school to school. And the bottom line on the second page. If you can see that, I think that is what, Cameron, 1889? Mm -hmm. So that's where I got that number. That's the data source. If you want to go to the SEEK 2223, another data source page I got. We get a SEEK forecast. We used to get it in January. Last year we got it in April. There's also a tentative SEEK. It's what this is. It's the next one. And later in the year we get a final SEEK. So another component of that increase I don't know if you can see that or not, but that increased from 4,000 to 4,100. That went along with transportation to full day kindergarten. So that was 4,000 the year before they increased it to 4,100. And there's the number that I had, 11,636,000. So those are actual numbers. And if you want to go to the ADM, ADA report, some more source data. We project next year that we'll have an ADA of 1,670 kids. I think right there it says 1,800 and what? The funding ADA? 1,687. Yep. So what that will reduce between now and the end of the year. And there's our attendance percentage, which is 89.37. That's far from where we want it. Typically at this time of year, we would be 92.5% or better. We've had a tremendous amount of sickness. We all know that. We're not the only district that's had the sickness. At the beginning of the year, Dr. Kerber will remember that I had each principal do an attendance improvement plan. We worked on it really hard. The sickness just kind of knocked it in the head. Is that a fair statement, Brad? That's correct. Uh, we projected 93%, but we haven't reached that goal, and it's attributed mostly to sickness. Yes. It's just been a whole year of sickness. So not only is our enrollment going down, and again, this is what our next year's funding comes from. We have a really bad attendance percentage. There's a lot of districts in southeastern Kentucky and what I go to that are like 85, 86, and 87 percent right now. So ours, even though it's not what we want, is still better than a lot of them. Still not what we want. It should be 92 and a half to 93 percent right now. So that's the source data there. I think I've covered all the source data. Okay, if you go to the sheet, the C calculator sheet. Like I said, the seat forecast has not been furnished to us yet. It used to be always furnished in January. We didn't get it in April last year. So myself and Ms. Bimble, we actually have a seat calculator sheet. We calculated our own seat. And as you'll see right there, we put 1670. That's what we project our AADA for this current school year will be. And another change as part of the legislature, it's a biannual budget. Instead of 4100, we got an extra hundred dollars right there, which contributes to about 167,000 more in our seat money. 
Uh, you see you're at risk, which is the free lunch, home hospital applications, your home hospital, I'm sorry, home household applications. Severe, moderate, and high, those are the special needs kids. Those are actual numbers. Those are from the December 1st student count. And if you'll go to the bottom, this is what we project our seat will be. Again, this is a projection, but I think it'll be very, very close, 11,137,000. So if you go back to the original sheet, that shows you where we got all of our numbers from. So there's 11,117,000. Our seat money we project next year will be a half a million less than what it was this year. And again, I've talked about this for three years. Is that correct, Brad? That's correct, yeah. And I've talked to the board about this for three years. So that's something that's out of our control, and it, it is what it is. If we hadn't received the extra $100 on our ADA, which is approximately $167,000, our seat money would have been down about $670,000. Half a million is bad enough, but six seventy dollars would be more. So I'll just go through this from the end of the 2021-22 school year to the beginning of the 22-23 school year. We had a loss of 13 students. The General Assembly allowed districts to substitute the SEEK AADA data from the 2018-19 school year for these three school years, 2021, 21, 22, 22, 23. We would get up to January, February each year and they would extend it for another year. That's probably not gonna happen this time. The 21, 22 school year also included full day kindergarten. We talked about that earlier, which provided an increase in AADA and that SEEK. At this point, the full-day kindergarten is just for a two-year period. We're in a two-year biennium, so we get that next year. There was actually a house bill that was filed to make the full-day kindergarten permanent in statute, and they even got off the floor when they even assigned the committee. So right now, the full-day kindergarten, the word they use to make it permanent is codified. It's just like any other thing in the budget. It could be there, it could not be there. I would anticipate and hope that it is, but it may not be, depending on the state budget. At the beginning of the 16-17 school year, our enrollment was 2,127. As compared to the beginning of this school year, it was a decrease of 226 kids. So you can see when the decrease started, it hit really hard. And like I mentioned earlier, it hit the other districts a couple years before it did us. But it hit really, really hard these past five or so years. So we will continue to monitor this very closely. We have prepared for this. We knew it was coming one, two, and three years ago. So we have prepared. A lot of districts haven't prepared. When you go to your KSBA training, they'll talk about a fiscal cliff, a financial cliff, where they haven't done the proper preparation for this, but we have done the proper preparation for it and we'll move forward. So that's important that we understand this as we move forward into the next school year. Does anybody have any questions? I know it's a lot of information, a lot of numbers, but it's important that we all realize exactly what the seat formula is and how it's a big part of our budget. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, that concludes, I'm sorry, item 2E, substitute report and personnel report. As always, that's going to close as an attachment for your review. With communications being completed, I'll turn the meeting over to Chairman Neely with item number 3. Item number 3, approve the bill of claims. Do you have a motion? Motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Yes, for me. Item number four, approval of the minutes from the January 17, 2023 regular board meeting. Need a motion? Motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Yes, for me. Item number five, approval of the memorandum of understanding between Partners for the Rural Impact and the Jackson County Public School. Okay. This is a great opportunity for our district. Back in August of 2022, and I believe the regular board meeting, the board approved for us to participate in this grant. It involved 12 other school districts in our region, as well as Partners for Rural Impact, and we were notified in January that we actually, or they actually received the grant. So the grant is 10 million a year for five years. It's 10 million a year for five years each, so it totals $50 million over a five-year period. That's for Partners for Rural Impact and us. We don't obviously get all that. It's split. I don't know exactly how that was split. But a big part of that, they will have a site coordinator position at each school. The site coordinator is actually an employee of Partners for Rural Impact. They're their employee. They hire them. But we'll have one in each school, each elementary, middle school, Dr. Kirby, and also the high school. 
there also be direct service money to work toward the goals of the grant, and there is a lot of flexibility that I feel we can work with the principals and work with Promise Partners for Real Impact to customize some things to meet some needs of our schools. So uh, we don't know exactly how much the direct service money will be, but it's a really good grant. I would compare it quite a bit to the Promise Neighborhood Grant that we had a few years ago, but the actual title of the grant is the Full Service Community Schools State Grant. And uh, uh, Mr. Hogg and also another representative for Partners for Real Impact will be here at the May board meeting. Again, a great opportunity for us and 11 other districts as well as Promise Partners for Real Impact and they will be here at the March 21st board meeting to give a, a much better overview and much more depth than I did. Item number five, need a motion? Make a motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Yes, for me. Item number six, approval of the district calendar committee as provided for by the Jackson County Board of Education policy 08.3. I think Ms. Allen wants to talk fast about this. Um, my thoughts on it is, which I discussed with Mr. Smith um, the other day, it would be nice, I know that there's not a statute that requires members of the community to be on it. And what I would like to see for, you know, from here on out is members of the community that positions are available for that we reach out to those those members the people that's on that's going to be on the committee they are a wealth of information but it would be nice to see just people that's not part of the school board to be on it did that not fall under number eight to business slash community members You are. So it's got the first one is a district principal, the second a district office administrator, a board member, parents, district elementary teacher, district middle school or high school teacher, district classified employees, and then two business slash community members. That's correct. So currently it's Tim True and the Stephen Gap. Yeah. Any like I said, they're a wealth of information and they're, you know, they're great at what they do. It would just be nice to reach out to the parents that aren't employed by the school system and community members that's not employed by the school system. It's within, the, it's within the criteria of the policy. That's what you're asking. She's just saying she preferred people that don't work for the school system yeah. to be on the committee. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was like that discussed with So, Mr. Bishop, will you note that? I know you're the over the counter committee, we'll note that. And, and uh, we have a really good counter committee. I don't think we've ever had a complaint, have we? No, not from inside the committee, we've not. So, but we can look at that if the board wants it. I mean, if the entire board wants it, we can look at that. Or, I mean, I don't know, I've never had this come up before, so I don't really know how to approach it. It's been pretty harmonious in my four years being DPP with the calendar committee that we have assembled. But we can look at that and if there's an opportunity to add people outside the school district we could. If we're not able to, then we would probably have to go with these. And nobody knows unless they're actually, you know, approached and asked, you know, hey, you've got a kid that goes to China, would you like to be on this committee? It's actually business leader. You have to be it's a dual but it's you've got business. parents representatives. Correct. Yes. That was just my thoughts. We could look into what other school districts do. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with seeing. There's, there's actually a policy that governs this, and it's policy 8.3. Policy, Again, it's our policy. Yes, the, it's our policy. Standard KSBA policy that all districts have. Mm -hmm. I think her point is she doesn't want people in the school system in those roles. She wants somebody not in the school system. It's just to open up opportunities. To, in addition to bring, to, to bring in to replace. Oh, oh to 
Okay, I thought it was in addition to what no, you're No, it's to replace the, our employees with people who are not in the school system, correct? Correct. If it says a parent representative as opposed to somebody that is employed in, inside the school system, to have just a parent. Well, it's the pleasure of the board. I'll do it, have you guys, correct Mr. Bishop, we'll do it, have you guys, probably this year it may be a little too late, but next year. Right. But it's the pleasure of the board. You guys direct us on what you want to do, and that's what we'll do. I've never had a problem with the calendar, except like if we go, uh, I've never liked us having school on uh, Memorial Day. But I know we always have like a big... Uh, Our preference would be not to do that. I know, and I bet it's only it. because it's had snow days and stuff like that. But personally, I've, I've never had a problem, but I mean... Everybody else's idea. Yeah, I just, um, uh, as you had, you know, I think one year we had like 53 days missed in school. I think it just came out for the last, what, a uh, couple of years or something, I think, to help set up the calendar. Ain't that the way it is? So oh, they, as far as setting the calendar up, they do the last five years. Of your, of your snow days. That's make up days is what you're referring to. About you have to build make up days into the end of the Yeah, calendar. you have to build make up days and you have to take the highest of your last five years. The highest number of days you were off, that has to be your make up days. Highest number of the last five and years. It's not really complex, but there's a lot to it. You have to have PD days, you have to have opening and closing, you have to have holidays, election day, those things where our schools are holding places you, now. And you got to build some so there's a lot to it. Right, you got to build some breaks in for the kids and the employees. I mean, like, so I guess you guys direct us on what you want us to do, and we'll do it. Or, yes, sir. And can I say this too? This year we have, um, and we've still got some days to spare, both NTI and days off. And we're going to be getting out, out for Memorial Day, and we're going to still have a full week of spring break. So that, and that's something that. I, I'm pretty happy about it. I think everybody else will be too. Provided the weather holds up through March. I I'm about ready to get my shorts on. So <laughs> <laughs> the, the direction for next year, do we want to replace the school employees with somebody outside or leave the school employees? I guess, is that the question that you hear, Mr. Bishop? That's the question, but I don't, I don't I just okay. don't know if you can. Uh, Classify somebody because they're a school employer or not being on the committee, you know, to keep them from being on the I'm a pleasure to vote. I'm fine anyway, so you guys tell me. I guess we just need to maybe. I would say get we need to ask some questions and gather more knowledge and information on it. Yeah. Okay. But pleasure to vote. If the committee's approved you guys, so you can direct me on what you would like and we'll do it that way. Yes. Okay. I don't but like this, this is pretty well set for this year. It'll have to be looked at for next year, right? Is that what we're looking at? Well, next, probably next week, and I'll be going over the calendar here, and in the following week, we'll have to approve the calendar, so we really don't have time to set to it on the committee it. at this point. All right. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody I'm trying to? Yeah, I was just thinking, not this time, but, you know, in the future. Okay. Thank you. So item number six, need a motion. <clears throat> Motion. Need a second. Okay. <coughs> Nicholson. Yes. Ms. Hassel. Yes. Ms. Allen. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item number seven, approving a little credit memorandum and an agreement between the Somerset Community College and the Jackson County School District for 2023 and 2024 school year. Yeah. This is something we're very proud of, is our dual credit program. And actually, uh, we have set so Somerset Community College, we also have two other college or universities that we work with, Eastern Kentucky University and Murray State. So our students, before they actually leave the high school, can have up to 40 college credit hours. Dual credit means they get high school credit, and while they're taking the class, they also get college credit at the same time. So they could actually be up in their sophomore year of college prior to ever leaving their high school. So we're very proud that we can offer that, and again, if they really work at it, they could have 40 plus hours of college credit. This is one agreement, the other two should come later in the year. Need a motion? Motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisel? Yes. Ms. Lee? 
item number eight approval to advertise for request for the purpose for the Jackson County High School cafeteria upgrade. Need a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Heisel? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item nine, approval of memorandum of agreement with the Cumberland River Behavioral Health and provide service for the 2023-2024 school year. Need a motion? Motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Heisel? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 10, approval to advertise for bid for the Key Elementary School wall panel and socket panel installation and repair project. As we know, we've completed the roofing project at Sand Gap. We've also completed the roofing project at Tyner. They're currently working on the roof at McKee Elementary. This is the metal that goes around the top of the building to seal the envelope and make a tight seal. So we've got the specs and we'll take bids and uh, once the roof's completed, then that would be the next step would be to do the metal around the top of the building or what they refer to as the building envelope. So we've talked about this for a while, but we're very close to seeing it happen. Need a motion? Motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Nelson? Yes. Ms. Alvin? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 11, approval of agreement between the Jackson County School District and Connection Speech and Language Therapy, LLC. Need a motion? Second. Need a motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Alvin? Yes. Ms. Nelson? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 12, approval of the financial <laughs> services resolution with the Jackson County Bank. Need a motion? Motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Item 13, approval of fundraising. Need a motion? Motion. Need a second? Second. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Yes, ma'am. And item 14, we have a public comment. Nobody's uh, signed in, correct? Could there be a lawyer comment? Uh, I was not. <laughs> I was not uh, derelict. I was meeting with a staff member. I don't know if Mr. Smith no, told you. We were meeting prior and I came down earlier. Yes. yes. I apologize for being late, but. That was the reason. Mm -hmm. It'll be all right this time, but this time I'll let Don't you. Don't do it more. <laughs> Don't do it. I just can't. Just can't. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. Item 15, approval of, to adjourn. Need okay. a motion? Second. Second. Sally? Yes. Ms. Heisman? Yes. Ms. Nicholson? Yes. 